Hello everyone and welcome to another video on JavaScript programming. Kaushal this side from Simply Code and today we will go through website layout and DOM manipulations in JavaScript. In the previous few videos, we learned about the window object and DOM manipulation in JavaScript. So far, we have a clear understanding of how the document object model works in JavaScript and how we can use it in our website. So in this video, we will create a website layout and make changes in that layout using the document object model. So without any further delay, let's get started. Today, we are going to work with HTML as well and a little bit of CSS. So we are going to use multiple tags from HTML and we are going to use CSS for styling those tags. So for now, I hope you guys must have a clear understanding of tags in HTML and styling as well. So let's move ahead and we are going to use the div tag first. We are going to make few sections of a particular section and then we are going to use CSS for styling those div tags. So let's use the div tags first. So what we are going to do is we are going to create a particular section for all the div tags in the HTML document. So we are going to write here div and then inside this div we are again going to create some more sections so we'll write here div and then we'll write here this is section 1 similarly we are going to create few more sections inside this div tag then we'll copy paste it and we'll change the names for these sections so we'll save it now and here you can see we have three sections we have section 1 2 and 3 if we go to element and if we try to check the area covered by these div tags so we can go here and we can see this is the area which is highlighted right now this is the area covered by a particular div tag so we have a div tag then inside that div tag we have three more div tags present right so we have section 1 2 and 3 here now we are going to use the concept of class and ids as well so we'll write here class is equals to and let's say the class for this div tag is left then again for this div tag let's say the class is right and then lastly the class will be let's say center right so we have three different classes here as well now if we save it we don't see any particular change for now but if we try to use CSS here so what we have to do is we have to use the style tag and inside this style tag we have to define the properties for particular classes so for class left let's say the property is background color and let's say the background color will be crimson fine next up we have the class as right and for right the background color will be let's say dark blue and then we have another class here as well which is center so for class center the background color will be let's say gold fine save it now and now here you can see we have all the three sections with different background colors this, this is section 1 so this particular section has the background as crimson then we have section 2 with background as blue and then we have section 3 with background as gold right i hope you guys are clear with this concept of class till now next up i hope you guys are already aware of this difference between class and id but let's go through this concept quickly so whenever we want to make changes in multiple elements in our program we use class for example if we want to use the crimson color as the background color for section 4 and let's say we want to use the gold color as background color for section 5 so what we are going to do is we are going to create two more sections and the section 4 will inherit the properties of class left and the section 5 will inherit it from class center so let's do it we'll create here two more div so we'll copy it and we'll paste it here and again we'll paste it here we'll change the names as 4 and 5 and the classes as well so the class of section 4 will be left and the class of section 5 will be center so let's save it you can see here we have two more div or we can say we have two more sections present over here we have section 4 and we have section 5 over here right now 
if we talk about section 4 we can use two classes here right so you can see for now we have only one class over here we can use another class over here so let's say we are using a class named size so for now we don't have any class with name size so this is the syntax of how we can use two different classes within a single element all we have to do is we have to put space between these two classes and we are good to go so let's define this class here so we have to define the class size here so we'll write here dot size and let's say we want the font size to be smaller so let's save it here you can see the font size of this particular div tag is changed the font is a bit smaller when compared to other fonts over here and if you want to do something more like if you want to make it bolder you can do it or any other thing you want to do you can do it with the help of CSS so on the other hand the ID attribute specifies a unique property or a unique section so using the ID attribute we can identify a unique element so as you know we can use ID with document dot get element by ID basically that is the only reason we say that ID has to be unique otherwise there is no problem if you are using ID for two different elements if you are using the same ID for two different elements let me show it to you with the help of an example so here in this particular section in this section 4 we are going to use the ID attribute as well so we are going to name this ID as 1 save it now and we have to define the ID here as well so for that we have to use hash and then we have to use the ID name so let's say this will change the font weight fine so it will make it bolder so let's save it now and here you can see this is section 4 is a little bit thicker than other sections so if we want to use this same ID for any other element right we can do it there's no problem with that let me show you guys so if we write a ID as 1 and if we save this program now here you can see there's no error with that we can use this ID for section 1 as well so it's not necessary that the ID should be unique for every element of the website but it has to be unique because we can use ID for manipulating a web page right we can use it with document dot get element by ID so that's why we prefer to keep the ID unique for every element inside a HTML document so I hope you guys are clear with the difference between class and ID by now the major difference is class is used for multiple targets whereas we use ID uniquely for each element we want the ID to be unique so that's the difference between class and ID moving ahead let's talk about the document object model so what we are going to do now is we'll go to the javascript file and we are going to see the document object model now by now we are aware of the document object model right we are aware of the window object we are aware of the document object we have already came across these two objects in the previous video so what we are going to do is we are going to write here where x we are declaring a variable x and we'll write here document so we already did this in the previous video so what we are going to do is we are going to write here console.log and we are going to print x on a console so save it and if we go to console here you can see we have the document here or we can say we have the document object model for the whole document for the whole HTML document we know that the DOM is a structural representation of HTML document so we have here HTML tag we have head body and almost every tag we have here right you can see we have script here we have div here we have all the div tags present here now we know that the document is also an object like any other object right we already discussed it it also has its own attributes and properties as well so next up you guys can see we have here a fundamental website right so this is a website basically what we have here is we have five different sections and we have a heading here as well right so what we are going to do is we are going to work on it with the help of document object model so we can use CSS to make changes to the syntax like we used previously while creating divisions of our web page but for now let's focus upon the JavaScript part more 
so in javascript we can write code that will help us in manipulating the document object model so this document object model has a tree like structure with html tag at the top then we have head and body tag and then we have all the tags present inside them in a branch like structure we are aware of this right if we see here in the console we have a document and if we try to open it we can see we have html head and many more tags present within all these significant tags next up if we write here document dot all instead of document so if we save it now here you can see we have the html collection of all the tags with numbers in front of them so here you can see we have HTML head and then body tag and here you can see specially we have the classes as well here not just classes we have the IDs as well so here you can see we have div1 here as well so this is the HTML collection of all the tags we have in a HTML document and we can check it with the help of document.all property now suppose we want to access a particular segment in this program or in this document we want to access elements present within the head tag let's say or within the body tag in that case we have to write a statement that goes like this so instead of document dot all we'll write here document dot head save it and here you can see we have the head segment of this particular document with all the tags over here so here you can see we have meta tags and title tags only because till now we haven't added any particular tag in a the head section of a HTML document so let's do one thing let's try to access the body tag we'll write here document dot body and save it so here you can see we have the body of our HTML document here with all the tags so here you can see we have the CSS file as well we have background color for each class and then we have the ID as well so this is how you can access a particular segment of your HTML document with the help of JavaScript. Next up, sometimes it may happen that we may include forms in our website and later we want to access them in our console. So in JavaScript, we have a method for that also. So what we have to do is we have to write here document.forms. So we'll remove body from here and we'll write here forms. Save it. As you can see, we have an HTML collection of forms, but we have no form for now in a HTML document so it's showing zero so let's do one thing let's add a form over here so we'll write here form and so let's say our form will take three values so it will take name age and then we have a submit button right so we'll write here name then we'll write here input type is equals to text and then we have name is equals to name fine next up we have the age so we'll write here age input type is equals to number and name is equals to age right then finally we have the submit button fine so we'll write here input type is equals to button and then we have value as submit let's say save it and here you can see we have name age and submit so let's do one thing let's add the break tag or br tag here we'll do it here as well save it and now you can see we have name age and submit so this is basically a form if we go to elements and if we go to a form you can see we have the form highlighted over here it consists of three different properties it has name it has age and then it has a button a submit button basically so obviously it will not work fine for now because we haven't added any functionality till now so we'll discuss about it in later videos so for now our main purpose is to access this form with the help of javascript we'll go back to our javascript file we'll save it again and now if we click over here you can see we have a form present over here we have zero and then we have form written over here right so we can see we have input and then we have the properties of this particular form and all of this stuff 
so you can see we have a form present over here or we can access a form with the help of javascript so now let's say we have a scenario where we have four different forms and we want to access form three from them so what we have to do in that case is we have to write here document dot forms and we have to provide the form number so as you know as you can see here the form number starts from zero so for form number three the number will be two fine so if we save it now it will show an error because obviously we don't have any forms over here till now so we have added only one form but it will work fine if you try to do it with more than one forms so this is how you can access forms with the help of javascript next up we'll try to access images as well so if you have added any image in your html document you can also access it with the help of javascript so what we are going to do is we are going to add an image over here so let's do it first we'll write here img then we have the image source as simply code.png and then we have the alt so we'll write here simply code right so we have added an image here save it and here you can see we have the image but the image is quite large right so what we are going to do is we are going to use css in this case we'll write here id and we'll let's suppose the id is 2 right we have used 1 already so we'll write here 2 we'll go to our css file we'll write here so the property we'll write here is max width and max height so max height let's say will be 50 percent and then we have max width as well so let's say the width is also 50 percent save it and here you can see the image is fine now so we have added this image over here the main motive is to access this image with the help of javascript right so we'll go to a javascript file instead of document.form so we'll write here document.images and we'll save it so here you can see we have html collection with image here if you noticed here you can see we have the image with the id as well so you can see here 2 is written over here after the img so this is the image and we can access it with the help of javascript we can access as many images as we want with the help of javascript so for now we have added only a single image you can do it with the help of more than one images next up just like we can access images we can access forms we can access the body segment the head segment everything of an html document similarly we can access the links as well we can access scripts as well so for that we have to make minor changes over here we have to write instead of document.images we have to write either document.links or document.scripts so the syntax will remain same all we have to do is we have to write here scripts or links or images whatever we want to access with the help of javascript we have to write it over here so i want you guys to check it with the help of links and scripts so that's all for this video guys see you in the next one where we will go through dom traversing in javascript if you like this video do give it a thumbs up if you have any doubts do let us know in the comments below share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe simply code thank you